right, so this is Scapegoat here with Primitive Man, the mighty Primitive Man. So this is just a little bio conversation, a little interview with these guys, seeing what they're up to. So, can we start like with all good stories do at the beginning? How did you guys get together? How did the band start? Um, so John and I were in two different bands and they went on tour a lot together. And then one day, on one of those tours, we decided that it would be cool to start a band together, so we did. And then um, Primitive Man played like a few shows with Joe's old bands, and uh, then a spot opened up for Primitive Man, and we asked Joe to play, and here we are. All right, cool. So, at that originating point, what were the influences to actually go, right, we want to play this in some, like tectonically slow, angry, clusterfuck music? Like, what was the what was the impetus to start making the music like the way how you play it? I think we both had common interests in like corrupted and disembowelment, and then uh, he really liked that band Indian, and I kind of got into that as well. And, like you're an unearthly trans, unearthly trans, um, winter, winter, and even like you know like death metal and stuff yeah. like incantation and stuff, but yeah. it's so, like the slower stuff. So was there like much of a scene like bubbling over when you were doing all this when it first started over, or were you kind of beating astray from what was happening in your local scene? Uh, it was. I mean, there's been like boom in Denver forever, but it's never really been like, super. More like on the stoner side of the thing. Okay. Yeah, like weed metal was real was real big in Denver for a while. Like. Okay. So yeah, we just wanted to do something. Yeah, Paul's a uh, real actor. Yeah. yeah. So leading into like a bit more about the band, where did the band name come from? What was the whole ethos behind that? I mean, we just. I think you were just like. You had like a list of band names. Yeah. And we were just like, that's the one. Oh, literally, so you just sat the midnight hour, like, just right in there. Yeah, because we were trying to come up with a name for a while. We used to be called Mercy. Yeah, we were, Mercy. for the first six months of the band, we were called Mercy. And there was, there's like a grindcore band called yeah. Mercy or something, and so we decided to change it to Put a pin in that and go into a different direction. Okay. So, I like to really talk to bands at like the beginning of their career, like how did you actually get that first release like was scored in like 2013? So how did you actually formulate them songs? How did you actually get them printed? How did you get that out? Um, well so I had a prior relationship with Rover Records who released that initially. Um, so that's kind of how that happened. I was, I was like, you know, I have this new band. A little side so project thing. And he put it out, and then Relapse heard the record and re-released it. And that was kind of it. So how about writing them songs? Did you have like fragments that were already floating about, or were you just like, here's the songs, like straight? We out. just wrote them together, right? Like, yeah, it was like he would bring like a riff and idea to practice, and then we would just like hash it out. You know what I mean? Also, really, just in the jam space, like little yeah, bright, like rooms. Sort of because thing. this band wasn't really meant to be like a super serious band when we got together, so it was like. Jamming yeah. until we found out our sound. You know? A couple of beers, like play yeah. some heavy tunes and just see where it goes. Yeah, there. it wasn't as serious of a thing when we started because we had other bands and we were pretty like. He was thinking about we were thinking about moving I was gonna away, move away yeah. from our city and so we were just kind of kind of do it and record just it. Have fun until he left. Yeah. Okay. But then it kind of turned into more serious of a thing. And, yeah. I talked him out of moving. I'm glad you did, man. I'm glad you did. You've got to hang around and see this through. So, throughout your career, like, I can see that you've been utilizing splits, and I absolutely love split LPs. Like, I find so many good bands through utilizing splits and listening to them. So, what do you find is the best thing that comes out of them? Why do you utilize them as a format? Like, how do they come to be? Like, well, Corrupted has like 10 million splits. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of my favorite bands have this catalog you'll never be able to collect because they have so many splits and all this shit. So I guess we wanted to just follow that. Uh, yeah, the Pokemon of LP collecting. You yeah. gotta catch them all. And, and we really just like to release music, you know, and, and like to write it, record it, and that whole process. So I think it's just like staying busy and staying active and writing songs. And, 
in this town. We just kind of both come from like grindcore and punk background too, so a lot of those bands did split up like seven inches and shit. I always thought that was a cool idea of like you buy a record, one side's one thing, one side's the next thing, and then you go get those bands' records. You know what I mean? Look, it is a collaborative affair. It's like community affair to be like, well, it's not all about this guy. It's like you're actually going like, I like these enough to play yeah. with them. Yeah, it's especially cool when you're friends with the other band, which we haven't always been friends with the band we don't split with, but the last few have been like that. It's been cool. Yeah, a couple of them came about just like we were trying to like meet some people in Europe, you know what I mean? So literally just putting yourself out there, like an email or two. Just well, see someone will like come to us and we'd be like, yeah, that sounds cool. So all the way up until now in 2017 when you've released Caustic, which is what well, you're touring on now. So how did we evolve to get to here? So starting up from all them days, all, all them years ago, back at Scorn to here, how did we get here? How did the sound evolve to get here? The show is just easy to write songs with. It's all this so we, Yeah, <laughs> so, we, so we really, you know, I think that this record came to be the way it is because we are all on the same page. It was really a fun process writing these songs together. We really and, had the intent on taking our time to on yeah. this last one. So. Every release up until Caustic was really rushed. Okay. Even the first record was rushed. We wrote like two of those songs a day before we went into the studio and shit. Oh, so, right. so Caustic really we like took our time and got to make it exactly how we wanted it to be. And, and we spent like a year writing it before we went in there to record it. And so. Yeah, it was just a lot more of a deliberate process, which... Uh, I think with that, it's like, this is what we've always kind of wanted to do. We just never really took the time to slow down when we needed to, or, you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, all right, we need to get in the studio this time and write these songs. So how about things like production and tech? Because there's a lot of bands which are flourishing in this era of tech and wizardry. So the thing is, like, how has your gear changed? Has the people that you've worked with for production? Has um, that so we recorded with the same person for everything. Um, Dave Otero at Flatline Audio does all our stuff. Um, gear has changed for me. But he, and you kind of, yeah. I, I, yeah, we, we both do two full stacks now. Yeah. And, like, just... I've had the same amp for, like, ten years. And then recently on this caustic thing, I got another full stack, you know what I mean? So it's, here it's come up, but it's still like, the sound is like, our tones just kind of still sound similar. It's just yeah, like the gear has changed, but it's just more amp. I feel like it's about the same. And so, you know, man, we really haven't done anything that much different in that regard. So the tone is not changing, it's more refined. Yeah. yeah. To complement instead of it just being another strange sound. Exactly. Yeah, we just added more. More, more volume, yeah. more volume, same tone, you know. Yeah, like separating frequencies again through different cabs and yeah, things like that. Yeah, we're we're fucking simple. Like we have, well, like we have like sam sample pedals and shit, but really, in the we could just plug into anything and fucking let it run. You know? Cool. Yeah. So another thing I like to always ask a fan's perspective of is your artwork, like because it's a full package. It's not just the music that you guys have worked on for however long it might be, but it's also the cover art, t-shirts, things like that, so do you collaborate with people, if so, who is that, how did they come to be? I just do all of it. You do the whole lot. So, Ace. Hey. Hey, <laughs> I might ask you to do some doodle before I go then. Oh man, I need a computer for that. Alright, okay. <laughs> so how do you come up with the concepts to like fit with the concept of the music then? Um, well, so you know, like the songs and lyrics and everything will come first, and then I'll just kind of make images that reflect the stuff I'm talking about. Yeah, it was really grainy, so did you have any, like, professional training or anything like that? Or no, I just taught myself that. Done it all real fast. Cool, man. So, one of the best things I think about music is seeing it live. That's the best way I to see it, so... It's the same again, I'm passing the baton on to you guys. Like, what is the point? Why are you getting in the van? Like, why are you doing this, playing this extreme music and touring and all that sort of stuff? What's, what's the impetus to do all I mean, that? obviously for fame. <laughs> yeah. No. Look <laughs> at okay, your face on a t-shirt and everything. <laughs> no, man, I... 
I don't know, we just like to play music. It's the only thing that I like to do. Pretty much. Both, we've all three been compelled since we were young to get in the band. Joe's been touring forever. It's just what you do. Yeah. We've been doing this shit together close to 10 years in different bands. Yeah, it's just like, it's cool to play at home and like, and, and do that whole thing, but it's just like not enough for us as people. Like, I'd rather play it all over the place. Yeah. You know? It's more fun, it's more of an adventure that way. Yeah, and it's a learning experience as well. Yeah, and, and also like playing this stuff every day is like a nice release, like seven days a week. So then when we get home, I get to be angry for seven days a week. <laughs> right. And wait to Build that shit back up yeah. again. Yeah. And then we go out and, and release it. Nice. So. So, to go alongside that same question, is there any antics, any stories that you'd like to divulge of being on the road? So, Primitive Man is the most boring fucking band you've ever <laughs> meet. All we like to do is get there, smoke grass, <laughs> and hang out. You know, we just smoke a ton and we of like grass. To go sleep after. Yeah, I mean, like all the antics I can think of all all revolve around weed. Like, the, like, like we've had to like. Like one time I forgot that we had weed and I had to mix it in with some food and we were coming to like a border <laughs> right, okay. and that was really scary. Yeah, and I had to like yeah. it. But yeah. whoever ate that later had the best time ever. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like gotten us weirded out too. Like one time in Germany, Joe and I had to eat a bunch of hash and uh, later on that night we were both like so fucking delirious that we hardly got through our set. I don't remember that show. On a different yeah. plane of existence. Yeah. yeah, you know, so like st stuff like that is like, like the that. craziest thing. Nothing but, too crazy. But now we just really try to arrange weed before we get to places so we don't have to travel with Yeah, them. so like, don't cart that shit there, get it with you there. Yeah. Yeah, but we just like to do the bad shit, like us smoke weed and chat with each other and be friends. Yeah. 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 So it's nice. Nice and short the last time. Yeah. Yeah. So, last but not least, the whole point of this channel is me to shine the spotlight on bands which I think thoroughly deserve it. So, it's now your turn. Is there any bands that are up and coming, good live show, just bands that people should go and see that they might not know about? I mean, about. Bismuth, who we're on tour with, is absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Um, Spectral Voice, we just did a tour with, they're killer. Yeah, Bell Witch. Amazing. Yeah, Bell Witch, we did a tour with this year, they're killer live. Yeah. We actually just saw them in this venue before Roadburn. Oh, oh my god, it was amazing. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Um, a Feather and Bone from Colorado, really good bands. Who else? Um, Blood and Contagion. Blood and Contagion, yeah. I mean, we're just like naming our friends' bands, those are the best ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of anyone that we've seen recently. Go check out Eat Bokin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, it really is the tip of the spear right now. There is so much going on all the time. And no matter what country, what little states you go to or see, you'll find something there that's bubbling over. Sea Bastard, that's another one from the oh, UK. Oh yeah, those are. Sorry, yeah. Batterman's with them last time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that was also an amazing. Sea Bastard is yeah. Lovely guys as well. Yeah, Ollie is one of our great friends. We've been to the UK, I think, four or five times now, and we met him on the first tour, and we're just... We're mates. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> Right, lads, thank you so much for coming and doing this. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to have some of your time. So, we'll get us up shortly. Cheers. Thanks, brother. Cheers.